Okay, so let's go into uh, the next phase of this. So I left off, we kind of animated uh, along the curve, just kind of showing again how these uh, normalized views can help us with relationships of speed. So, and I've put in place some of this bouncing. Uh, let's just double check this again. Okay, so not bad. I'm actually going to hold off on this section that I've built up here um, for the mechanics of the, the, the squash and stretch. I might do some other um, need to think about, like what the acting is that's going to be there. So I'm going to start with actually these bounces, these little squash and stretches in between that I'm setting up here. I think these will be easier to understand, right? So the ball comes up and as it stretches down, you know, and there's, well, I'll do a, a more advanced tutorial about this one later, but I think as it comes down here, you know, it could stretch out, but certainly what it needs to do is squash. So the way I like to look at this is sometimes when the ball comes down, it squashes. And then a lot of times people would put the deepest squash right in the middle. Actually, I like to shift it a little bit towards the end so that it explodes off the ground a little bit quicker. And there's also some things we'll want to do with the, the keyframes for that. So um, let's just go to I guess let's look at all those. And we're only going to look at these keyframes up here. All right. So I've kind of isolated the keyframes just as part of the bounce, right? Okay, so uh, first thing is I need the ball to squash straight down, but the the squash and stretch uh, tools themselves are not really set up the way that I want, right? So I, I'm using the, in fact, let's go to one of the first bounces, boom, right? It's going to come down, it's going to squish right there. Let's just make sure, yeah, so frame 160. It's going to squash, and then by 64, it's going to 65. It comes off the ground. 64 will be the last. So, but it's squashing kind of not straight down, but at an angle. I don't really like that. Um, part of it is because I have the world, uh, the move tool set to world as the axis. I could put this at object, right? So now you can see it's squashing down with the direction of the ball. This might be helpful here, but I. I don't, I just don't like that it's kind of shearing, right? You know, I don't want it to, in other cases, I might want that to happen, but I want it to squash just straight up and down. So I'm going to leave that at object for now. And what I'm going to use is, and I'm going to have to use this anyways, because I'm dealing with, uh, I've decided for whatever, for various reasons to use the rotation in this. I get more accurate rotations out of it. It doesn't run into the problem that the little red rotate tool comes up with. But it does mess with the squash and stretch, but I can fix that, right? So let's come down and hit the ground. And what I can do is just go into the, oops, sorry, grabbed the wrong one. I need is that black one right there, right? So what I'm doing is just rotating it so that it's basically straight up and down. This might get a little tricky later on, but there's a, um, we're gonna use a, a different tool to help line this up with the trajectory of the ball bouncing, right? So all I need to do is in essence, put this corrective little um, rotation, right? You can see that the ball, this that blue black line is called the ball deform rotation control, right? And it's, purpose is exactly the way we're using it. So I'm just going to put a key here. And it just means that once I figure out all my timing and spacing and all the things I need to do, if I make my object tumble and roll, I'm just going to have to, in between the non-squash -squ uh, and stretch places, kind of uh, reorient those controls so they're in the right place. And there'll be a separate tutorial about that one. Right? So now I've just lined this up so it is straight up and down. And I'll just leave it there for now. I don't there's no reason really to change what I already have in there. Now I can animate these, right? So let's just put, in fact, the keyframe before, 
it hits the ground. I'm going to select both the squash and stretch for now. I might change this later. And I'm just going to key those. And then when it hits the ground, I'm going to squash it down. As we can see, so that's probably wrong right there, right? So that control, it's, uh, it's 78 and 82, it comes off the ground, right? So let's put this one. I'll put a key there. Can you see how it's coming down? It squashes, it keeps squashing. It's kind of holding a little bit, and then it's gonna come off the ground very quickly. And in that case, what I wanna do is Stretch that up. If I wanted to, I could hold this one down a little bit, but I'll, I'll just use the top one for now. Oops, let's like that one. See how it quickly goes from there to there? Let's look at this one. Frame. All right. There's lots of different ways we could look at that and you should decide what you want. This is what I'm trying to do is figure out what's the fingerprint or the characteristic of the squash for my character. See how much change is there? Boy, that's kind of snappy nice. I might do that. And then we need to, of course, when it goes back up here, let's just put it at, oops, sorry about that. The spaces, let's zoom out. Oops, I forgot to put that last one in there. All right, so it's really important. You don't wanna have this squash going on too long during the like you don't want it to be stretched out when it's all the way up here right it just starts to look weird it's a ball we want it to be a ball but we just want to create the illusion that it has these forces right so maybe let's just since we're dealing with that little section there let's make this 163 or 160 All right, and to 196. So I'm just gonna look at this focus little thing. I can just play it back multiple times, right? Doesn't that squash and stretch mean seem like it's kind of building up some energy, right? It's compressing and expanding. And the squash and stretch is just meant to make us fool us into the idea that there's some force going on. If we had a character with arms and legs and they were doing leapfrog or jumping or they were a sports athlete, you know, um, a soccer player or something like that, in the running and jumping, there would be this kind of compression just with their limbs and the way they kind of fold in their body. Now we're just using the squash and stretch to, to heighten that, right? Okay, so... Let's move back to, where do we want? Let's start at 145. All right, so the next part of this, in fact, I'll just kind of leave that be for now. I haven't done too many bounces, right? I guess I did that little one there. I could do the same thing with that squash and stretch. In fact, you know what? I think I'm gonna leave that it, here, I think that's good enough where you can get the idea as far as what those those uh, animations might be. Let's go to the very beginning where the jump is gonna even start, right? So the character rolls back and where does that start for us? Okay, so 150, nice clean number to remember. From 130 to 150, we have to kind of decide what is gonna happen with our character to come off the ground. So. I'm going to 
start with the idea that um, maybe at 149, I'm going to squash the ball quite a bit. Okay, and then it's going to come off the ground, kind of stretch. And then maybe my this frame, it's just at zero. that one frame all right and if we go back to our beginning where was that keyframe uh, 130 that's right okay so the ball at that point should be not compressed we haven't done that part yet right there we go so in between there we have to kind of decide what we want to have happen right we could animate this so that it comes down and kind of breathes a little bit. I don't know. Let's just do it. Let's go ahead and put a little keyframe right here. And I'm just going to do this visually. All right. So if I select the curve and I right click, I can insert a key. And I'll pull this down. Right, so it's really getting itself kind of going. Maybe the hesitation is not as much right there or something like that, right? Right, so it just does a little, I like this idea better. And I'm not going to have that one start at, right at 130. Mm -hmm. Right, so I don't have any other squash and stretch on that. But you can see the ideas I can kind of play with what this should be. In fact, as I look at it, you know, one thing I want to do, in fact, if I was to animate this from above, I would animate this um, jiggling maybe so not only down, but side to side and back and forth, like it's building up a lot of energy. The other thing too is I don't think I've left myself enough space. I think it just plays a little too fast, right? I want it to kind of build up more. So I think what, uh, in between this tutorial and the next one, I think what I'm going to do is just create a little more spacing, which is, you know, what is already in here. Like, let's go to ball character set. I can see all my keyframes, all the things that have been put in there. And we were at frame 130, and it squashes all the way down to 150, right? <laughs> you can see it's like ever so slowly comes off the ground. All right. So again, I used the ball character set down here so that I can see all the keyframes that were put into that ball group. And I did this for you as part of the rig, right? It doesn't have uh, the attributes for the placement control, but it has basically everything else. Uh, I think those are in there. I hope those are in there. Yeah, you can see the input say ball, and that's the ball character set. So now I can look at that, uh, that translate if I want. As it comes down right and starts to stretch and then comes off the ground. I'm just going to insert some keys as I go along. Oops. So I'm going to get it to this point a little bit quicker. Let's see what I did.
Let's go back here and see. It's kind of flat. I like that a little bit. I'm going to really pump it up there. Let's bring this down a little bit. Even just one frame, boy, it just seems so much snappier. I like that. Right, and this is one of those I would spend some time really thinking about that. You can see how I quickly spaced this out so that I gave myself a little more time so I can really play with this energy that's gonna happen. Maybe I play with it like this. Um, there are no rules. Well, there are rules, but then we get to break them. So at this point, I stretched it actually higher. Maybe we keep it up here. Let's put another keyframe. And every time I do this for a class, I always do it slightly different. I'm always curious, like, well, it's a different character this time. I'm a different person. I'm a different animator. What do I want this to look like? All right, let's see. Now we're getting somewhere, I think. Right, so it like gets up on its tippy toes and then compresses back down. All right, so let's recap. Uh, very important is this little black one, based on the shading that's in there, you might not see it as well. But that is, if we look in the rig itself under the controls, it is the ball deform rotate control, right? Hopefully you don't have to go in the rig to find it. Um, but it's black or dark blue, I guess, is it? It looks on here. Um, I've got my render setting, so it's nice and smooth and kind of a thin little curve. But if we select that one, we can see it's got the deform. You can see the translate and scale are grayed out. And all that is is meant to be um, something to correct so we can make sure we put the squash and stretch where we want it. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show how to make this ball when it bounces instead of exactly straight up and down, a little bit to side to side. So it looks like it's playing a little bit, right? And in doing that, we're gonna to have to change where the squash and stretch is happening because it's probably gonna happen in an angle is the character is gonna be jumping in my version that I hope to do back and forth, side to side or something. And we're gonna use something we haven't used before called a motion trail so we can kind of understand the trajectory of the ball. All right, uh, I think that does it for this one. I will upload and move on to the next. Um, this is probably enough to get you started, but um, if I get time tonight, I'll probably do one more. Um, that should be plenty for you to work on for a while.